Hi, everyone. I'm Aubrey Ruby. I'm a senior fellow at the Africa Center at the Atlantic Council here in Washington. And I'm so pleased to be joined today by Elan Ibobise, who is the CEO of Africa 50. Africa 50 is a premier infrastructure investment fund based in Casablanca. Thank you, Elan, for joining today. Thank you, Aubrey. And so we are here to discuss some of the things Africa 50 is doing, especially in the wake of this global economic crisis caused by the COVID virus. Uh, we know that Africa's infrastructure needs are immense. And how has the COVID crisis and the concomitant economic problems really impacted that need? I assume that it means that there's even a greater need to mobilize capital for infrastructure needs. What are you seeing, Alan? Well, uh, Aubrey, thank you again. Uh, and thank you to the Atlantic Council uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to discuss these matters. Um, um, you see, Aubrey, uh, even before the COVID-19 crisis, Africa needed massive investment to close its infrastructure gap. Uh, this has become even more urgent now with the health crisis. Therefore, the first observation that I will make is that uh, any post-pandemic stimulus plan uh, should include an infrastructure component. And I will continue to argue that we should figure out a way to increase the participation of the private sector in implementation of these infrastructure program in Africa. Uh, so as you said, Aubrey, this all means that uh, there is an even greater need to mobilize capital for infrastructure need. Uh, the extra challenge that we are facing, facing though as a result of the crisis is that uh, there is a big capital flight away from emerging market. Uh, according to IAF, uh, the first quarter of 2020 uh, saw the largest capital flight ever recorded for emerging market, even more than the, during the global financial crisis. And of course, uh, uh, Africa is also impacted. Uh, it has become very difficult for African countries to borrow and government bond yield have, uh, has spiked in many countries. So yes, we have to work harder and explore new ways to mobilize capital for infrastructure needs of the continent. And I think uh, we have to work on uh, parallel tracks. Uh, first, I would say that uh, African countries should continue to work with external partners, uh, MDBs, other DFIs, and also I would argue commercial lenders uh, to negotiate uh, moratoriums, restructuring plans, and other schemes that would create this fiscal space for the continent uh, that the continent needs to fight the pandemic, but also to stimulate the economy after the, after the health crisis. Uh, uh, second, I would say that uh, we should work very hard to attract private investment uh, from outside Africa, but also, and in my opinion, even more important, Aubrey, I would argue that we should mobilize our own domestic resources. I do believe that uh, mobilizing domestic resources uh, will help us uh, send a very powerful message from Africa to the world that the continent is implementing programs that leverage its own resources to finance its recovery at the same, at the same time as we are seeking global support. So and Africa 50 is an example of that, right? Your shareholders are African governments. Well, absolutely. Africa 50 as an example of that is uh, one way uh, for Africa to basically to uh, take leadership in mobilizing those resources. But we are also promoting another idea, uh, which is, uh, uh, assets recycling, which is a way African countries can raise funds uh, relatively quickly. Uh, and this enables government to unlock the capital that they have invested in profitable, profitable assets. Uh, and by offering this asset to private investors on the concession schemes, uh, Africa 50 can participate, but we can uh, bring in additional investors. And this will free up capital uh, so that uh, those governments could use that capital to fund uh, uh, various uh, stimulus plans, including infrastructure. And I also and think that- What is it, for those who are watching this and who aren't infrastructure investors like you, what is an example of asset recycling? Well, an example of asset recycling is, uh, for example, a project that we are, we are doing right now, uh, which is a government is, uh, owns a, a fiber optic network in their country owned by the government. And we, we told the government, look, you, you, know, you, you, should, be own, you should not be owning uh, fiber optic networks. Uh, the private sector knows how to do this. So we would, uh, you know, uh, concession, government concession this project out to us and the government will get, um, you know, a fairly sizable sum for money uh, in exchange for the concession. And the government could then invest, reinvest, inject that money into the economy. 
I think this is a fresh idea, the fresh kind of thinking that uh, we should we should be having here. And the idea is gathering momentum, uh, Obre, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, we received the support of our chairman, Dr. Akumimi Adesina, who, as you know, is also the president of African Development Bank. So, so that's, that's an interesting idea. But the other idea, Obre, is that we need to figure out a way to mobilize also um, uh, uh, institutional investors' capital, especially from African pension funds, uh, sovereign wealth funds, etc. Now, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, discussion on that, I know, uh, but we are having serious conversations now with key players in, the, in this space, and we believe that uh, we, we could, we could uh, put together something uh, important uh, very soon, so stay tuned. Yeah, and maybe it's the crisis that's creating that opportunity because, like you said, we've been talking about mobilizing African pension funds for economic development needs for some time and to even fund things like private equity funds. But a lot of the countries uh, didn't either have the regulation that enabled it, that has mostly been dealt with from my view, but didn't have necessarily the uh, education within the pension funds on these different asset classes. So it's good that you're engaging with them on the infrastructure asset class because infrastructure projects often have uh, revenue that is most fit for pension fund returns. I agree with that, absolutely. This is the case that we are trying to make, yes. And so we know that across the continent, we're seeing the first economic contraction in 25 years. Obviously, there's dramatic differences between a Nigeria that is shrinking maybe by three to eight percent, depending on oil price, uh, to a Kenya that maybe will eke out very small positive growth. Um, and so this is kind of, Dr. Adeshina, as you mentioned, kind of described this as a detour on Africa's story of rapid growth. Uh, and the IMF continues to lower growth projections. So how do you think growth can be recovered in the near term in the region? Yeah, but hopefully it's clear that uh, the numbers are not good. Um, you know, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, recent uh, World Bank analysis, uh, you know, you quoted the IMF, you know, let's mention the World Bank. They're forecasting a contraction across, uh, across the board, a GDP growth that can, uh, that, that can contract. <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love for it for, to be growth, but uh, GDP contraction uh, as high as uh, 5%. But uh, recently, uh, early July, we also saw uh, we also saw um, a report uh, by the African Development Bank, uh, which updated their growth figures and they're giving us a little bit of hope uh, because, uh, indeed, uh, there could be a slight um, a slight uh, rebound uh, next year uh, in the tune of three percent or so. But clearly, COVID-19 uh, has an unprecedented negative impact on growth. Uh, given the way it has disrupted life and businesses globally. Uh, but I should say, Obre, that the immediate response of uh, Africa, uh, Africa leaders, uh, has been uh, quite good. Uh, many countries have rightly focused on saving life and protecting uh, livelihoods with short-term uh, relief measures and stimul stimulus measures to keep the economy going. I think this policy should continue. Uh, we should continue to focus on uh, income and uh, giving support to workers and, and businesses, et cetera. Um, I think uh, African ministers, uh, they have called for a big stimulus. Uh, I think the numbers which is floating is $100 billion plus, uh, really to, to stimulate the economy. I should also mention uh, the effort of the African Development Bank. Uh, they, they came up with an unprecedented program of $10 billion uh, crisis response facility and $3 billion uh, social bond. So a lot of initiatives. Now, at Africa 50, we have, uh, we have less resources. Uh, of course, uh, we were created to catalyze private investment. What we are doing, we are pushing uh, for a strong focus on infrastructure uh, as, a, as a growth catalyst, uh, because infrastructure has high multiplier effect. We are arguing that we should prioritize projects that uh, do the most to, to stimulate economy activity, uh, create employment, uh, provide opportunities for suppliers in the infrastructure value chain. We are also focusing, Aubrey, on the ICT and innovation yeah. infrastructure. I think it's an important point. I'd like to expand on that uh, if, you, if, you, if you like to. But uh, I think we should also focus on health and sanitation sectors. Uh, now, these sectors have traditionally be, traditionally be uh, funded by government, but we see a number of uh, PPPs, uh, private projects in that space. So at Africa 50, we have a project development uh, uh, window. And we are focusing on trying to make those projects bankable so that we can attract private investors and uh, 
and since government resources are limited and they want to be able to, 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 to fund this, uh, this need. Final point I'd like to mention on this, which is really, in my opinion, transformative. Uh, it is uh, the Africa uh, continental free trade area. I believe that we should very much focus on continue, uh, continuing implementing this uh, very, very important uh, African project. Uh, this will strengthen regional value chains, uh, boost infrastructure investment, advance the digitalization, and then provide so many other benefits, uh, you know, uh, including reducing the continent's uh, vulnerability to external shocks. Yeah, I'm glad you bring it up. Our last interview in this series was with the Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, Wam Kelly Mene, and we talked exactly about is this time an era that we can innovate in terms of how these type of large trade agreements are implemented. And I'm glad you brought up the ICT issue because you know, during this time, I think we might see some fundamental restructuring of certain African economies. And one of the things that's giving me a lot of optimism is around digitization. We know that many, many countries in the region were still paper dependent in, in almost all their operations, in-person meetings, queuing, all of these things. And I think COVID has been a trigger uh, and the fire really, uh, really amping up digitization efforts. So we'd love to hear a little bit more about what uh, the Africa 50 is doing on the ICT side. Well, absolutely, uh, Aubrey. Uh, developing the digital economy, um, of course, is, is really crucial for Africa's long-term sustainable growth and, 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 and more important, I would say, resilience. You know, if you look at what uh, we are going through right now, uh, you will see that um, ICT infrastructure uh, and especially the internet has proven to be almost indispensable for maintaining a functioning economy in many countries and in addressing the health uh, emergency. Uh, what we have seen is that in, in countries with good internet uh, connectivity, you know, students could pursue uh, the education online, uh, uh, government offices could provide services, and, and businesses like my, my own business, uh, business that I'm running, Africa 50, we, we were able to function uh, really seamlessly. Now, unfortunately, uh, while most uh, advanced economies and, and cities in Africa uh, have uh, you know some of the necessary ICT infrastructure. Others, and especially in remote areas, rural areas, they are deprived of the connectivity uh, and the social economic resilience that it can provide. So, Bray, what we are doing at Africa 50, we are calling for massive investment in ICT infrastructure in Africa, and we believe that uh, this is key uh, to generating inclusive growth and building the continent's resilience. With, and is this we, in terms of broadband, like the undersea well, cables, satellite, like what is the actual infrastructure that you're investing in? Well, that's a totally uh, a good uh, question, uh, especially because I was just about to mention uh, some of the sectors and sub-sectors in which we are focusing on. So we, we, are, we are indeed looking at uh, uh, investing in um, uh, broadband networks, uh, uh, data centers, uh, uh, you know, to, to increase the penetration rate of broadband uh, on the continent. But uh, we also want to increase funding uh, uh, to startups uh, that could help uh, find disruptive technologies that uh, would cater for specific African needs. Uh, I think it's very important. And, and we see a number of startups and tech companies uh, that are already innovating in these fields in Africa. Um, so, so, so what the point is that uh, we at Africa 50, we, we're focusing on a bigger digital infrastructure project, but also try to, to find ways to stimulate the innovation by help, helping build the ecosystems uh, where these technologies can be developed, shared, and etc. You may know, Aubrey, about the, uh, the fact that the government of Rwanda, under the great leadership of uh, President Kagame, has selected Africa 50 as the co-developer uh, jointly, jointly with the Ministry of ICT and Rwanda Development Board of the flagship Kigali Innovation City project. It's a fantastic project. We believe that uh, it, it will support the goal of driving innovation and ICT development in Africa. So what gives me hope is that innovation is already happening all over Africa. At Africa 50, actually, we launched an innovation challenge last year uh, to find solutions to last my connectivity challenge. And, um, and we received 600 solutions with over 80% of those solutions coming from Africa. So this shows that innovation and ICT activities are quite vibrant on the continent. What we need to do now is to scale up and speed up investment 
in that space. Thank you, Alon. I mean, it's really showing that there are uh, African solutions to African problems during this very difficult time. And it's Africa 50 and other partners that are, are making it a reality. So thank you for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Aubrey.